Ah, oh, disgusting. What is it, 6th of January? 6th of January, 6th of December, 2015, Mr. Max Bliss in the southwest of France. And this morning, well, a few of these planes are doing filthy, great big, long, persistent contrails. This particular one, which is quite uh, thick, that was done by Condor. Condor laying persistent contrails. And this one, um, this one is that one there. Let's have a look. Ah! Adverse. Whamos Air. You can't make this stuff up really. So many different airlines. We don't see them all the time. Whamos Air. Flying, leaving a shocking trail behind. Let's have a closer look at it. Let's see what's happening in there. Right, we did not see this when we were growing up. I don't care what the army of trolls have to say because they're, they're really a waste of time. And that's my advice about anyone who gets plagued by these uh, really abusive and nasty trolls. Just ignore them. They're a waste of your time and energy. And that's their job. But uh, shocking skies. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Now, here I've got a suggestion for everybody who has been paying attention to the sky. Because I know a lot of people have been concerned about this for a long, long time. And I know a lot of people whom, just like me, take photographs every single day. And what you've come to realize is, it's amazing how often we see these things these days, and how the program has changed over the years, how the types of trails are differing, how the types of clouds are differing these days, how the, just the sky is completely different. So we've got an evolving program. Now my suggestion is, with this wealth of photographic evidence, taken over years now for many people, what you have there is a vital data set. A data set that can prove that what we see in the sky is not just a contrail. It doesn't necessarily prove it's a chemtrail, because you would need aerial samples and scientific uh, examination analysis to determine that it's a chemically nucleated contrail. Okay, we can't necessarily prove that through observation, but what we can prove through observation using atmospheric soundings from historical data is, and also just the volume, the frequency of chemtrails, contrails, what we can prove is they can't always be a contrail simply because the, the frequency of seeing these persistent contrails, cons persistent spreading contrails and all the different things that we're seeing in the sky because of aviation, which does affect climate, we can determine that because of the high frequency of observation of these things, that what we are seeing cannot be simply a contrail. So we can prove through observation and a high volume of seeing these bizarre things in the sky that they cannot just be simply explained by saying they're contrails. So we can prove that. Now I would say that that is something we can all do. We've got to, I don't know how to do this and I know it's simple, which is, you know, it's, it's, this is an admission of mine. I, I'm sorry, I'm not a computer technical person. But what we've got is the opportunity to do databases. And we can ask different questions at entry points in the fields of the databases. So that we can go through all our time-stamped photos and we can describe or tick box what we see in those photos into a field in a database. And then we can create a data set of observational 
evidence that what we see in the sky, my friends, is not entirely natural, is not a normal consequence of aviation use. It is actually something that's abnormal and highly indicative of a deliberate type of covert weather and climate modification. So we can all take part in this. Those of us that have been taking photographs for years, virtually every single day, we are sitting on a data set of highly important observational data. There are discrete atmospheric conditions that must be present for a contrail to form. Contrails do not form obligatory every single flight. So therefore, if we monitor the pictures, if we describe perhaps even the different types of bizarre smoky clouds and things that we see, all the different types of clouds, uh, the, um, a complete description, tick boxes, we can begin to use this observational data set to demonstrate or highly in indicate that there is most definitely a huge program in place. It's obvious, it is, isn't it? I mean, just look at the sky. Of course, it's obvious, but we have got, we're, we're up against it. We're up against a group who are actively deceiving the people of the world. Our governments are working in collaboration at the highest levels to create a one world government, a totalitarian system to enslave the people. They've been, they understand that open warfare will no longer be satisfactory to subjugate the population of the world. They know this now. But they've installed all the puppet governments through their various wars and they have virtually global domination of the governing institutions of the world. Now these governments and the various corporations and banks are working to create a one world government system so that the oligarchy, predominantly the bankster families, can get a world empire with them at the top of the pyramid of power. They are working towards this. This is what the annual meetings of the Bilderberg Group are about. They are working towards one world government. Now they have an obstacle, a major obstacle. That major obstacle, my friends, is that they need the consent of the people. It's hanging in the balance. It's not a foregone conclusion like they would have us believe with their repetition through their controlled media. They would have us believe we have no chance and we must capitulate to them. They want our acquiescence. They want us to surrender to their massive global system. They want us to be in awe of all the things they can do. The totalitarian surveillance age of, the, of Orwell. However, it always relies on our consent. And I urge everybody to do your research. You can't rely on other people to get information for you. You must do your own research. And there's a wealth of information you can find. And you must look for it. It's absolutely critical you look for the information because it is there. Deforestation, it has been a deliberate plan. It is part of the climate control programs. Yes, what's been going on in the tropical forests of South America and of Africa and of other locations around the planet, the deforestation is deliberate by the military industrial complex. They, all the corporations are all interconnected. The pyramid of power, the people at the very top control everything. And they are deliberately controlling the weather and climate. This is their vehicle to get the one world government they've been working for for hundreds of years. It's absolutely real. 
people have to understand that this is absolutely their goal to control food, to control water, to control people. Control food and water, you control nations. Food as a weapon, 1974, Henry Kissinger, Memorandum 200. This man's an insane despot. He's still alive, so he can still go to jail. He can still face the public for his crimes. He's a war criminal anyway. We are being conned, my friends. United Nations Con 21. The idea is, and I have seen the documentation, these global plans, there's going to be winners and losers. It's not a win-win scenario at all. And many of the, the uh, reluctant actors, many of the nations in the Southern Hemisphere or in the developing countries are going to be the losers if they agree to sign up to this United Nations Climate Treaty, which benefits the military industrial complex. So these reluctant actors and the documentation I have seen states that they will actively bribe these reluctant actors, these nations, their representation, their representation, their negotiators. They will actively bribe the nations. They'll buy them. And if that doesn't work, then they will sanction and punish those reluctant actors, these nations that are going to be the losers in this United Nations Climate Treaty. They will punish them and bring them into line. We are talking about a totalitarian system. If they can't buy you, they'll punish you. But one way or another, they intend to bring all the nations of the world under the wing of the United Nations, which will be the framework for a one world government. A system of tyranny. A totalitarian system where technology is going to be rolled out so at such incredibly sophisticated levels it will implement a scientific dictatorship for 100% total monitoring of all life on this planet. Horrific, brave new world. And we have to unite to stop this. This can't be allowed... This abomination of this, uh, this insane, inbred, immoral, criminal elite. Their long-term plans, they're centuries old, to create one world government. We cannot allow these, these, in, these really sick people to achieve their goals of one world government and use technology and science to uh, implement a, a horrific dictatorship where privacy is uh, a privilege from the past, where absolutely no one will have any privacy. Absolutely no one whatsoever. You've got um, billionaires like Richard Branson sponsoring geoengineering to control the weather, and, you, and he's also um, sponsoring the OneWeb. What's the OneWeb? The OneWeb is a system of satellites. There will be 600 satellites in orbit by 2018, creating a global internet grid so that nowhere on this planet will be able to escape being monitored by Big Brother. The internet of things. Everything is going to be connected via the internet. You will have no privacy. The smart grid. Smart means self-monitoring, analysing and reporting technology. And this smart grid is part of the infrastructure of the New World Order to main control, maintain control over all the citizens, the slaves of the New World Order. It's time to wake up, my friends. Do all you can, research as much information as possible and share it. 
be the change you want to see because we have to participate in our emancipation. Take care and bye for now.